Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill and this is Trying to Stand, where I try new things in pop culture because I've been living under a rock. Tuesdays is Trying to Stand music. It's Saturday, which means another Trying to Stand animation, Saturday morning cartoons vibe. There's a theme here. This week I decided to watch Bee and Puppy Cat. The whole series is here on YouTube. I, I've been doing my best to follow the trajectory of this show and I've, I've gotten lost several times. It started as a Kickstarter project, so it's, it's a uh, independent, crowdfunded project. I'll warn everyone we get the spoiler territory, but you can watch it here on YouTube, so watch it and come back. Please come back, please don't leave me. But yeah, we're just gonna be talking about the show, uh, knowing nothing about it going in, what my reactions were, what my impressions are, the context that I pulled out, and uh, yeah, this show is First off, gorgeous. I love the color palette that was used. I love how everything has this soft, comforting quality to it, but it also takes its world and characters just as much seriously as it does uh, in a silly, fun way. I, there's a really good balance there. It's mysterious, it's, it's fantasy, it's sci-fi fantasy, but it also has a lot of really grounded elements to it, and I really enjoy a good combination of uh, the unrealistic and the realistic. A lot of it is very much a love letter to the tropes of animation, specifically with anime. It's <laughs> it's gonna be really hard to describe this without spoiling, but I'm gonna, and if I spoil something, I can cut it out later and you'll never see it. So the story is centered around Bee and Puppy Cat. I, I don't know if that's the species. Her roommate animal. Bee is a kind of get the vibe of like maybe early mid 20s girl in the modern world who at first glance is very uninspired, moves at her own pace, kind of head in the clouds, uh, loves to eat, loves TV. So hard to, to describe this without spoiling anything. Puppy Cat gives her access to a portal where she can accept temp jobs from a giant TV and goes to other planets to do various jobs. She definitely has a bit of a sort of a relaxed mindset than most as you start to go through this series, which the season's only an hour and change. You start to really see that she has a lot more that she's dealing with than one would expect at first, and I was even taken aback by it. I felt like this whole thing was going to be a fluffy marshmallow cloud of just a happy-go-lucky show, which nothing's wrong with those, but it just peels back not even a whole layer, like fragments of layers. It very much has a lore and a mystery to it, and it doesn't really give you a lot of it, but it gives you enough for everything to make sense. Like I said, it's so grounded. End of the day, we start to learn that there's little nuggets, sprinklings of things that allude to something grander in retrospect, but at the time it just seems like it's just a, a girl who doesn't want to grow up, you know, sort of stagnant. At, again, first impressions, maybe even apathetic. The focus of the earlier episode stems on one of her friends, uh, Decker. He is a cook and he's just been accepted to a culinary school, but he's not sure. He's torn between being uninspired and stifled in his current restaurant job, where he doesn't, his words, doesn't make anything different or interesting, just cooks the same thing, or can really uh, hone his craft and, you know, learn how to express himself and grow through his passions by going to this culinary school he's been accepted to. But he's torn, he doesn't want to leave his friends, his family, there's something to be said about not only apathy, but also uh, safety and comfortability, like not wanting to take risks. And it's, we really spend a lot of time on the second layer of the show, sort of exploring that. He lives with his family. His sister has a job that she's good at, but not inspired by, but it makes good money and she, she's good at it. She doesn't really like it, but you know, sticks to it. And we even learn later on that she did give up a passion so she could focus on this job and she's content with that. So it's all these different levels of finding the right fit for you, but then also showing you that the right fit doesn't always mean like it's your utmost dream or the thing that makes you solely the happiest, like your career doesn't always have to define you. We learn from his sister, whose name is Castaspell, was her full name, the wizard family. I'm a what? A wizard. A thumping good one, I'd wager, given the proper training. Yeah, it's Castaspell, I think. Yeah, Cas, but her full name is Castaspell. And it, it, we explore all these different levels while we also look at someone like B, who 
doesn't really have a lot of defined interests or goals. And through this temp agency, I noticed a lot of the jobs that are given to her break down to things that would appease to her personality, almost like, uh, what are those tests called where it's like, like a career. Aptitude? Thank you. I almost said attitude test, but that's not right. Layman's terms, trying to help somebody. Uh, she also at one point t is given a temp assignment where it's just to be lazy, just to be fed. And then even at one point we see a temp job at the end that caters to somebody's aptitude. And I found that really interesting. And there's all these little nuggets along this trail line of the show where it just, it gives you all the pieces that you need to figure everything out for yourself. But it's so vague that it like makes sense in the moment, but you don't realize how many loose threads are in this moment until it weaves into the grander picture at the end. And I loved following that breadcrumb trail delving deeper and deeper into who these people and more specifically who B really is. It's it's a lot of these strange visuals that at first glance don't really connect or make sense, but I think that's kind of what's exciting about being Puppy Cat is that everything is so deceptive. And I'll leave it at that. Everything after, everything onwards is spoilers or we'll just cut to me watching it and cut back and everything we talk about now is spoilers. You're choosing this. All right, uh, let's check out B and Puppy Cat. I've never heard of this before but I know it was on one of my C2E2 badges that's been in the background. Bee and Puppy Cat's been a part of us this whole time. The real Bee and Puppy Cat are the friends we made along the way. Like and subscribe. Yeah anyway I know nothing so let's uh let's do this. Shout out to Cartoon Hangover. It's where I'm watching and I'm assuming they're responsible for this as well. Oh it's so pretty. Why does that cat look so angry? It's because he's a puppy. And she's got crystals for fingers, what? Why can't I ever dream about food? Huh, <laughs> me. Oh, I love the music, it's so chill. Oh. You look so cute, Nick. Oh, so we speak kitty, okay. <laughs> Does it look like a from the grocery store because it's empty. Oh, me, I already relate to you so much. Why is the cat trying to buy a chainsaw? <laughs> he just looks so angry. Oh, does the bread have a face? Oh, does the bread have a face? Yes, treats on a budget. <laughs> oh, it reminds me of a uh, Simon's cat. I used to love those cartoons. Are you guys still wearing your pajamas? It's almost noon. I'm still wearing my pajamas. Judgy Jason, Judgy Jessica, food. In the bathroom? Yeah, right? Wait, are you magic? I don't, pardon the pun, I feel like I'm missing a key ingredient here. <laughs> Looks like a BMO angel. Ew, you touched my face. Wait, did you wash your hands? There's no time yes, I always wash my hands before I film because I know I'm gonna touch my face. <laughs> ah! This is very cute and very bizarre. I mean, travel through people's mouths. Um. <laughs> Look, I saw your acceptance letter. <laughs> oh God. Oh wow. Cool. Can we go back to the cat that wants to wear a leather jacket instead of talking about real stuff? I mean, I'm here for it, but that was we shifted gears fast. She is. Eh. When did everything become so sad and so dangerous? It's only been ten minutes. Oh, don't kiss the cat. Oh, yay, she released the little cute ghosts. You didn't have all these animals? I murdered you. I mean, thanks for looking out for the adopted animals. Oh, and the blue lumpy space princess looking. Oh, God, eat him. Oh, God! What? Why do you still have that poo monster? That was really cute. Oh. Huh. Is Puppy Cat's color scheme supposed to be the trans pride flag or am I reading too much into this? Also, I think the dreams are about her fears of growing up. There's a lot of subtlety here and I wasn't expecting that from the first episode. I'm, I'm intrigued. I could be reading way too much into this though. It's fine, we'll find out. Okay, yeah, that felt like it was super about like the reality of like, yeah, you have to work, but like, oh, if you're gonna miss your show, like you can tape it, like kind of touching on responsibilities and 
reality, very Spirited Away vibes in the cat bathhouse thing, which, God, I haven't seen Spirited Away in years. Abort, abort, change the channel. Dude, fuck you guys. Dude, is her dad dead? I, if you guys are making me watch this and her dad is dead, I'm gonna be pissed. I love that song though. It's a box. My dad made me. Like an urn? Maybe I'm just going through a lot of shit. It would make sense though if something traumatic happened and that why she, that's why she's having trouble like growing up. Yeah, so I wouldn't be lonely on my birthday. Oof. I'm gonna reject my, this is an earned theory. I don't think she's eating candy of her dad. Oh, and she shared it. Me, that's called depression. Me and dad had kind of a thing we did. Oh, leaving me apart. I'll take you to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm a little upset. It looks different. Yikes. After you, lady. A lady. Cute joke, but I'm not in a cute joke moment right now. Oh my God, it is a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> okay, Steven Universe kissing healing powers. Do you have a job to do? <laughs> it's a water cooler replacement simulator. My dad came up with it when I got sick. Oh God. Is this about depression? I don't wanna work on my birthday. Responsibility. Yeah. Is this about depression? She doesn't do things for her birthday. The stuff with her dad. Why? Ooh. I have a video game job for you. Maybe there will be cake. Portal. It's a portal joke, right? My ass. Oh yeah, and she said hell in the last episode too. Are we allowed to swear here? Huh. It's a character select. I get it. Oh, the sound effects. <laughs> Oh my god, this is straight up like OG Final Fantasy. <laughs> oh, and it's crying or drooling? I can't tell. I'm too scared to find out. One is scary, one is sad. This stopped being relaxing and cute, and now I'm just worried. Not getting to the root of the real problem and just being distracted by like what's easier, more palatable for you a side quest, or I'm reading way too much into this and I'm just depressed. <laughs> That's always a possibility here. Barf and my honky tonk band name called it. Oh, uh, card captors. That's what that reminds me of. Yay, what happened to her dad? I get it, I gotta fart and barf. Oh, Guys, what the f Like, that's lovely and beautiful. Why is it getting dark? Why are we swearing? Why is it getting upsetting? Go back to being cute. <sighs> no, have have meaning, have a, have a purpose, have a goal, teach us things. Sorry, I got super sucked into it. I just wanted to take like a 10 minute break to rest my arm, get through an episode. And now we're baking in the temp dream world twilight zone with um boy uh wizard the dude with like the practical magic different colored eyes thing also that kid's mom's in a coma this show what is happening okay okay we're doing a baking temp job and puppy cats winnie the pooed into a bedroom window all right oh he's making donuts wow. deckard thank you Yo, that's gonna be the future one day. Oh God! Oh. Ah. Oh, what? Oh, it reminds me of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood with like the transmutation little hands. It's like one of the three animes I've ever seen. Um. Oh, don't say something really nice before you go to hell. They ate her hands. Oh, ah, ah, what? Oh, God. 
she's a robot? An android? Did her dad build her? Cause he like built games, and now she's strong? Ugh. Is this a dream? What the hell? Why, sh why do we have evil eyes now? What, 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 but, what? Tommy we so? What the f just happened? I wanna go home. He's just, he's seen some sh I turned in my cooking parts academy competition. Yeah, no sh He's still depressed. He's just depressed in pants. Me. Are we not gonna talk about the robot? Is B real? Oh. Oh my god. Wait, what? Yeah, no sh Wait, the, the mom was the jellyfish octopus story real? What? Uh, what? I'm so confused. Well, sh that was pleasant and well animated and engaging and then just kind of ended. Is there more? I'm so confused. Oh, release date update two weeks ago. Okay. So maybe... It hasn't come out yet. All right, I, uh, I'm gonna take a minute, rewatch that, and I'll see you in a bit. Crazy. I didn't see that coming at all, and there's so many bits and pieces. Watch it a second time, too, after you've let it kind of sit in, which is what I always do before I do this portion of it. And then after the second viewing, I sit down here to kind of give more thought out thoughts. But there's so many little nuggets that allude to her being a cyborg or a robot. I think she's a cyborg, which even the circuitry of it, it's like it's ribbons, it's stars. It's, it's still cute. Like it's not, you know, this like intense amount of violence, but there is an intense amount of emotions and depth and tragedy and like, like the circumstances of each character suddenly start to kind of grow for you. Going down to even Deckard's sister, who isn't a very large part of the season, but still delivers some really key information and I could argue might know more than she leads on and she's the one who's, who initially pushes Deckard towards culinary school and away from B. I wonder if Cass knew the whole time that B was a robot, what if the coding that she's been working on, she kept referring to it either as First it was her job and then there was freelance. Maybe the coding that she's working on has something to do with B. Cause she brings up in the first episode, aren't you ever worried that she doesn't grow up? And at first I thought mentally, emotionally, her apathy, her immaturity, the arcade, which that episode I think might be my favorite of what, 10 episodes, that one's probably my favorite. Like the dad's arcade is like covered in trees and boarded up and run down and condemned. And you really start to wonder how old B is. She was sick and her dad would make her games, but the game talks about, I wrote it down. Help me fill your black heart with stars. Which makes me wonder because this was the game that B's dad built specifically for her when she was sick and the game it turns out is just to dance in a room full of stars as she does at the end with puppy cat and i'm wondering if it was a game that just allowed her to actually like get up and dance with her father I'm gonna throw it way back like a dot hack sign kind of and this was a way for her to dance she punches through the boards in the arcade there's comments that deckard makes about her strength he even says that she's so heavy it feels like she has metal bones there's tons of little droplets here for her not being 100 percent human or organic there's definitely like some sort of grander evil with the with the black hole with tiny hands from hell but we don't get into any of that we also learn about the different ways of coping with depression and loss b kind of buries her feelings if anything goes out of her way at times to neglect not only responsibility but her own emotions as well she feels guilty when she tries to do something fun on her birthday because she misses her dad so much then we also see a uh, cardamom her landlord's son acting as her landlord really little like six or seven tops i don't think they say his age if they did i don't remember and he has like a toy hammer and he's going in to fix uh, her broken toilet which again 
again, alluding to her being a robot, it was clogged with a can of food, an unopened can of food. Her apartment doesn't have a kitchen. We see that his mom is in some type of coma, like she's sick. He takes over being the landlord. He's collecting rent. Like I said, he comes to fix uh, B's broken toilet. As opposed to B who regresses, he aged up as much as he can to compensate for what he has to do. He has to take care of himself, trying to do the job, but like he's eating candy. He's prepping plates of candy for his mom and leaving them by her bedside. He's folding origami. One of them by her bedside is like a, a paper crane, which reminds me of um, that really sad story I had to learn about like folding a thousand paper cranes to make a wish. I'm sorry, I'll put the story up here. The name of it, I forget, it's been so long. He's taking everything from the angle of fairy tales. Like, oh, if I was a good person and behaved like a prince, maybe I could wake a sleeping princess like my mom. Her story about like the octopus and the princess and the hair combining to make jellyfish, I think that's the story she tells him about what happened to his dad. It's so interesting to see those two interact with the same or similar circumstances. First you see like, oh, it's a kid pretending to be a landlord. Like that's kind of kooky, that's kind of silly. Kind of feel like I got called out for dismissing this unsupervised child taking on the role of a landlord. And I, I, I love being called out on that. I love being challenged on that. Reaffirming there's more to someone's circumstance and giving us the grace as an audience to the show, we get to eventually learn that there's more to the situation and start to view and treat and handle the characters a little differently. Everyone just kind of dismissing Deckard as just being depressed, but then also reaffirming if he is depressed, you know, just because he's not wearing pajamas anymore doesn't mean he's not dealing with things. Like you can be depressed in pants, which I want that tattooed to the small of my back. I love the comedy in it too. I love this idea of like puppy cat having his own like language, but B can understand it. We get the subtitles of things along the way. It felt like it was, again, a love letter to anime when you have both uh, the dub and the sub, the humor of the subbed version as a character and then people not knowing what he's saying and not interpreting it correctly. And I, I just, I found it really funny. Now that I can talk spoilers, the temp bot picked that baking thing at the end, whose boss is Tommy Wiseau. I was right. Um, but I think that was picked because it sort of gives you an aptitude test. It read Deckard gave an assignment and then that was sort of what inspired him to go to the culinary school was, you know, oh, well, I don't really bake. And then he got really excited. He got really intrigued. He started to participate and realize that that is who he is and what he wants to do. Also probably seeing that his closest, one of his closest friends is part machine, but even down to the little crystal fragment shattered gems, he didn't use his, his wish in a sense came true to pick to decide and to move forward confidently. Oh, and her fear of water leading to her being a robot as well and like she wouldn't take a bath. It was a lot. It's all even foreshadowed in the video game uh, that she plays, which uh, shout out to having three options for genders. Noticed that the second time and loved that. It sort of foreshadows the whole thing where there's this big bad boss, but like, no, we're gonna interact with the town, the people, but then there's this big looming threat and then it's just taken care of like that at the end and it cuts to two characters playing the video game and one goes, and that's just the tutorial. And it took me as like, and that's just season one. I have so many damn questions and I feel like nothing was answered here. Again, I don't know if I'm reading too much into this, but I also found it very interesting that puppy cats, uh, puppy cat being a fluidity between a cat and a dog, puppy cat then also having the color scheme of the uh, trans pride flag. I thought that was interesting. It also fits with the color scheme. I could just be insane. I just keep coding everybody, which I learned what coding is now. Shout out to the round table. I watched a video and learned what that word meant. So glad I learned it way too late in the game. We have this moment where a dog chasing a bird starts biting her hair. She doesn't notice, she doesn't care, she doesn't feel it. So again, like not really feeling pain. The dog is also voiced by Aaron Ego Raptor Show Feet Hansen of Game Grumps fame. And I, like, I can't. I don't know why that just tickled me so pink to find out, but there's so many casts. The sister is freaking Chloe Price from Life, Life is Strange or the voice actress Ashley Birch. Tom Kenny. This cast is just so... And then, yeah, freaking Steven Root. Bill Dotry from King of the Hill. He's also in Barry. Fred Stapler guy, he was the farmer on top of the weird cherry cube that harvests bodies and souls the first time you should be realizing that B isn't 100% a human being. This show, man, I really hope they do more. Like, go watch this. Like, shout it out. Let Frederator and let... 
damn it, Natasha Allegri. Allegri? Creator is Natasha Allegri. She did um, Fiona and Kate for Adventure Time and a bunch of other things. Let these people know, like, I, I want this thing to show up somewhere. I think the show's really funny. It's just the right amount of dark for what it's going for. Like, it was never jarring or distracting. I loved the songs. The one for the jellyfish fairy tale, but then also um, Bee's birthday. This kid who just wants his mom to wake up and really devastating, but it never once pulls you out of it. Like, everything, for as much of it that doesn't make sense and it's hard to describe, like, everything makes sense. Never once was I pulled out of the story. I just was always perplexed as to, okay, well, where's that leading? After a while, it started to show me everything does mean something, and it's just intriguing and intriguing, and you're just following this trail of candy. I really want to see what happens next. You guys wanted me to watch it, and I'm really glad I did. Setting yourself up for, like, this fluffy, fun, wacky fantasy ride, and then just, blam, these are still characters. Uh, the kid's a landlord. His mom's in a coma, that's why he's doing the job, because his mom's sick. She acts like, you know, she's not ready to be an adult. Uh, her pr most prevalent uh, adult role model in her life is dead and left her a box to engage with her on her birthday, fix her prosthetics. As everything starts to unravel and evolve, Puppy Cat even learns to like stop being so focused on the outside. We start with him determined to get a leather jacket so he can look as cool outside as he does inside, looking at B, who's fixing her arm and realizes that he hasn't been focusing on her as a person either. And now here she is exposed with her hand being fixed. He sits down to just talk with her and get to know her better because they both realize that the two of them are so wrapped up in their own things, they realize that they don't really know that much about each other and they start to explore that together. And that's where the show ends you on. Asking more personal questions of each other and like figuring each other out more. And I feel like that's kind of the ride that we've been taken on here. Two people have been spending the whole season together, just sitting down and getting to know each other with an interpersonal exchange as opposed to starting on a bright colorful moment with like a superficial exchange. I thought that was brilliant. I hope this story gets to be told to completion. But yeah, there you guys go. Those were my thoughts on being Puppy Cat. What do you think of the show? What did you think of my thoughts? Something I missed, something that you liked. Are there other shows you want me to check out? Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you did, subscribe if you want more. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope everyone's staying safe. And while you're being mindful of others, remember to take care of yourselves, please.